Welcome to Learning Chinese Provinces, Part 2. Learn 11 more provinces. Part 1 of this three-part series introduced a handful of Chinese words for compass points, geographical features, etc. 北, 东, 南, 西, 山, 河, 湖, most of the 12 provinces or administrative areas included in that video were north-south or east-west pairs, linked to a geographic feature. 山东, 山西, 河北, 河南, 湖北, 湖南, 广东, 广西. Others were not paired, but used similar descriptive words. 陕西, 北京, 上海, 海南. Part 1 was super easy. Let's get started and learn 11 more provinces. These are a bit more challenging, but understanding the meaning of their names will help a lot. In part two, we will start with seven new place names associated with rivers. Rivers have played an important role in the development of Chinese society. It should not be surprising that Chinese has more than one word that means river. In part one, we learned 河, a word for river associated with the Yellow River. Here are two more words for river. 川, 江. This common word for river is incorporated into the names of four provinces. Three of these are clustered together in eastern China near Shanghai. You have probably heard of the Yangtze River. It is the longest river in all of Asia and the third longest in the world. The Chinese name of this river is Changjiang. It means long river. Note and remember the word 江. The mighty Yangtze River 长江, flows into the sea in the province to the northwest of Shanghai. Located in this province is the ancient city of Suzhou, known for its beautiful gardens and canals. The name of the province combines the word for river 江, with the first part of the name Suzhou. So the province is called Jiangsu. The province to the south of Jiangsu contains the mouth of the Qiantang River. It was originally called the Zhe River. That historical name combined with the word for river give us Zhejiang, the name of this province. To the west of Zhejiang, we find the third of this group of three river provinces. The words for river plus west give us Jiangxi, the name of the province. Another province containing this word for river is in the far northeast corner of China, next to the border with Russia. That border is defined by an important river known to the Russians as the Amur River. Chinese observers noted that the water looked very black, and the river seemed to curve back and forth like a serpent. So they named it Heilongjiang, which means Black Dragon River. You can imagine this black dragon protecting China from Russia. A cultural note. In China, there is a color associated with each of the four cardinal directions as well as the center. Black represents north, so it is also very appropriate that the dragon watching over the northern border is black. The northern province, shown in yellow, is named for the adjacent river, so it is also Heilongjiang. 
Let's pause in our discussion of provinces named for rivers. The huge autonomous region at the northwest of China is called Xinjiang. Jiang? One might imagine that this province is also named for a river, but this is not correct. In English, we have numerous examples of different words that sound alike. Consider tu, tu, and tu. Chinese also has words that sound alike. But as you can see in their written form, the jiang in Xinjiang is not the same as the word for river. In this case, the word means border or frontier. Xinjiang means new frontier. If you are familiar with American history and folklore, the term frontier referred to the westernmost reach of the country at a given time. In the case of Xinjiang, this new frontier is the westernmost part of China. And what a frontier it is! Xinjiang borders India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Mongolia. Eight countries! Let's turn our attention to Sichuan. You may sometimes see an older version of the spelling of this province name. If you like to go to Chinese restaurants, you may have heard of Sichuan. Food from this part of China is characterized by hot, spicy flavors. The province is also home to the greatest concentration of pandas in the world. This striking animal has become a symbol of China. The province name has been traced back a thousand years. Historians say that it is based on the description Lu, meaning four districts of plains and river gorges. This was shortened to Sichuan. Over time, the province name was informally reinterpreted. The revised meaning will help us remember the province. Sichuan is a combination of the word for the number four and this word for river. See how the written character resembles the flow of water. The names of the rivers aren't important, but look at how their flow from north to south resembles the vertical lines of the written character. Chuan. Sichuan. Four rivers. The name seems to really match the terrain of the province. Looking once again toward northeastern China, in an area sometimes known in the west as Manchuria, we see the province marked in purple. The Liao River flows south through the middle of this province and gives the province its name. Liaoning. This is the combination of the name of the river plus a word meaning peaceful. Liaoning. The peaceful Liao. In part one, we showed the location of Beijing, the capital of the People's Republic of China. To the east of Beijing, between it and the sea, is another municipal area that is not part of any province. This is called Tianjin. Around the year 1400, a prince named Zhu Di crossed a river here as part of his successful quest to overthrow the current emperor. Zhu Di became a very famous emperor, and this river crossing was known by the phrase Tian Zi Jin Du. This means the Son of Heaven's Crossing. The term Son of Heaven is a common way the Chinese refer to an emperor. The phrase is inscribed on a huge stone that historians later placed at the spot. Tian Zi Jin Du was shortened to Tianjin, which became the name of this municipality. The first part of the name, Tian, means heaven, referring to the emperor. The second part, Jin, refers to a river crossing. Depending on its context, the word can refer to a ferry dock, a port, or to a shallow part of a river where you can cross without a bridge. Tianjin, the emperor's crossing. Tianjin is the last of the administrative areas whose names refer to rivers. 
So we once again turn our gaze to the west, where we find the province of Qinghai. Qinghai takes its name from a huge lake in the northeast of the province. Qinghai is the largest lake in China. Do you remember the word Hai from Part One? It means sea. We saw it in the names of Shanghai and Hainan. Qinghai is huge and composed of salt water. Water that flows into it does not flow out. Is it any wonder that it uses the word for sea? Qinghai means blue green sea. Let's pause for some interesting information about Chinese words. To the uninitiated, written Chinese seems pretty confusing, but often there is logic behind the seemingly random marks that make up characters. Let's look at some of the words we learned as we studied the names of provinces. These are words meaning river, lake, sea. And river crossing. Notice that all these words relate to bodies of water. Look at the characters again. Each has a grouping of three small dots on the left side. The three dots together are called the water radical. Many Chinese words related to water include the water radical in their written form. Many Chinese characters include both a radical that relates to its meaning and one that relates to its pronunciation. Intriguing, don't you think? Keep your eye out for the water radical when you see written Chinese. Okay, back to business. To the southwest of Sichuan Province is a series of mountain ranges, sometimes called the Cloudy Peaks. And to the south of these cloudy peaks, we have Yunnan Province. Perhaps you can guess what its name means. It is a combination of the word for cloud and the word for south. South of the Cloudy Peaks, Yunnan. Let us again focus on the area of the provinces near Shanghai. Look at the province colored orange that borders all three of the clustered Jiang provinces. Notice that the Yangtze River runs through this province on its way to Jiangsu. Note two important cities: Anqing to the north of the Yangtze. And Huizhou to the south. These cities give the province its name. Using the first character from each city name, An and Hui, we get Anhui Province. Part two has added eleven provinces and administrative areas. As a review, let's test ourselves. What province is the site of the mouth of the Yangtze River and includes the ancient city of Suzhou, Jiangsu? What province includes the mouth of the Zhe River? Zhejiang. Of the cluster of river-named provinces, which is the one most to the west? Jiangxi. What province is separated from Russia by the Black Dragon River? Heilongjiang. What huge autonomous region is called the New Frontier? Hint: the word for frontier sounds just like a word for river. Xinjiang. 
What province has a name that can be translated as Four Rivers and is famous for pandas and spicy food? Sichuan. What province is named for the Liao River? Liaoning. What municipal region is called the Emperor's Crossing? Tianjin. What province is named for the huge blue green saltwater lake within its boundaries? Qinghai. What province is south of the cloudy peaks? Yunnan. What province contains the important cities of Anqing and Huizhou? Anhui. How many could you remember? Watching this video a few times will help solidify your understanding. A bit of trivia. Put away your pencil and notebook. What follows is interesting, but not critical to learning province names. In this video, we learned about Anhui, whose name is derived from the first part of the names of two cities within the province. Anhui equals Anqing plus Huizhou. This is a pattern that is repeated with the names of several Chinese provinces. In part three, you will learn about a couple more. In fact, earlier in this video, we encountered another province that uses this pattern. The details were not mentioned at the time because it was not important to the understanding of the province name. That province was Jiangsu. We learned that its name is the combination of Jiang, a word for river, plus Su, the first part of the name of the city, Suzhou. Historically, the character Jiang was incorporated into the province name indirectly. It came from an important city called Jiangning, which straddled the Changjiang River. Over the years, the city's name changed. Today, we call the city Nanjing. Although historically, the name Jiangsu was derived from Jiangning plus Suzhou, it is simpler to just remember that Jiang means river. We have reached the end of part two of learning Chinese provinces. Along the way, you have been exposed to some interesting aspects of the Chinese language, as well as a little bit of Chinese history. Continue on to part three to learn the remaining provinces and administrative areas.